Hey, what's up? I'm going to be showing the strategy that I kind of use against Zerg. Sometimes not all the time. It's, uh, to be honest, it's not very effective, but it can catch your opponent off guard. And I'm just going to be showing you basically what you need to do and the steps that you need to take, the build order, how you can counter your Zerg opponent no matter what he does, even if he expands all over the map, this build will basically rape him. Especially if he expands all over the map because there's no way he can defend all these expos based on how large this map is. Look at the distance he has to run, etc. For Protoss, like, when you use this build, basically what I'm going to be doing is just going mass carriers. And when you use this build, you're going to have a lot of excess minerals, so you're going to want to throw down a bunch of cannons. And block those cannons with gateway, so that way the, the Zerglings can't get a surround on the cannons as easily, and they're going to have a uh, much easier time taking out the Zerg opponent. So at this part of the game, I kind of made a mistake. I saw the Zerglings going up the ramp. And I was going to put down a pylon. And the reason why I put down a pylon over here is to prevent any more Zerglings from running by. And the Zerg player is seeing how far ahead he is. He's delaying mining time. So he's just going to go ahead and go for a third expo. But at this point, I'm a little behind after that Zergling attack because I forgot to put down my Cybern X core. I thought it was already built and I was going to put down my Stargate. So at that point, I realized I got to get this as quickly as possible. So that's a full 50 seconds delayed. And that could have really cost me the game if this was master or grandmaster league but this is just between two diamond players so after i kill that pylon i feel it's safe to go for a third because you cannot get carriers off of two base it's going to be a little too weird so i'm just letting the zerg player macro up and if we pause at the specific part of the game he's pretty he's way ahead of me in workers but the thing is, with Protoss, if you max out an army of carriers with 3-3 upgrades, it's going to be pretty difficult to take out, even with mass hydralis and corruptors. So, I'm going for cannons, just blocking off with the Nexus, getting some uh, gateways, so that way the Zerglings can't get a surround on those cannons, getting some excess pylons, just in case if any of the pylons are taken out. And notice how I wall in. I make it so that way... It's pretty difficult for Banelings to run by and they would have to kind of go all the way around to avoid those cannons. And then they could go from this angle. It's not the best. I could have did it a lot better. But I was kind of focused on this attack and forgot about it. It was on my mind. And as you can see at this point, the Zerg player is really far ahead in supply. Workers, he's way ahead economy-wise. Economy-wise, he's... Not too far ahead, just around 300, 400 workers. Hopefully he stops making workers soon, and that's what, exactly what he does. You want to stop at 80 workers, you don't want to stop at 89 or 90. Anything above that is kind of overkill, and you're just sacrificing army. And uh, I have my Void Rays up here for defense. I think I move out with them eventually to try to protect this expo. Actually, no. He actually sends the Banelings over here. No, he still has the Banelings over here. So he sends the Lings from up here and sends them down here. Unless if I miss something, if he sent Lings from here. So he denies my fourth, which is kind of a big deal. I need that extra gas really badly. Plus on top of that, he killed a few cannons and a couple pylons. So that's like 500, 600 minerals wasted. And if we look at this point, let me just go back a little bit. He sends in a few Banelings over here, and he kills quite a lot of workers, and we're just going to watch it drop. Holy crap, I didn't realize he was getting this many workers. Uh, at least he drops down a few. So he does this Zergling kind of as a distraction. On top of that, he sends in Banelings while I'm not paying attention. I kind of have my forces in position to deal with it not too well. Not exactly in the position that I need it. And I lose not too many. Like 15, 20 workers. I thought it was a lot more that I lost. But it didn't cause that much damage. And at this point I'm trying to save up gas. I kind of already have the gas. I really should start getting 2-2. Two, two. And we already see him reacting to my build. This is not the appropriate reaction. Getting Mass Hydralis. And the reason why is because they have very low HP. Even though he has 2-2. Two, two, compared to my 2-2 as well. Uh, this is kind of a small army. Eventually I'm gonna reinforce it because I'm producing off of how many Stargates? Oh, that's just, you know, four Stargates producing 
four carriers at a time. So he pushes this back and he denies my fourth again and we're kind of on even footing at this point. I kind of don't mind that I lost that expo again because he's not really mining off of this base plus he just dumped a bunch of money into spore crawlers. I don't even, for the most of the game, I didn't even know there was an expo here. So that kind of helped him a lot. So th at this part, he's going to get a nice fungal growth on the army, but... And he's probably going to expect me to retreat or something, and he tried to focus fire on a carrier. And that didn't really work out. And he really should have had those Corruptors supporting his army with those extra Tomb Festers. I think that kind of would have made a difference, maybe, depending on how well he micro, but he just lost a huge army. So if we just look at the units lost tab, he's already in a deficit by 7,000 resources and I realize at this point I don't want to move out quite yet even if he's expanding all over the map I don't even care if he grabs this expo I want my fourth because eventually I'm going to be mining out of my main pretty soon which is exactly what I'm doing and this 2,000 minerals is going to go away pretty fast because he's going to weaken my army no matter what even if I have 333 and uh, I, I'm just, my thinking is that I need those minerals, I need that gas, I need something to rely on before I move out and crush the Zerg opponent. And then it just comes down to how well can I micro my army, how well can I micro my carriers versus the corruptors and just keep moving the carriers back as a result every time he tries to focus fire on the carriers. <clears throat> if he tries to focus on the interceptors, that's a huge bonus. That's just free kills everywhere because interceptors are cheap. Extra 25 minerals. I micro one carrier back. He was focused firing on that one, but he immediately focused fires on the other one. I don't quite notice that, and he gets that carrier, but not really worth it in my opinion. And as you can already see, I already spent most of those minerals just trying to secure this expo, and it's definitely worth it. Each, there's 1,500 minerals per mineral patch. And, uh, yeah, you just want to make sure you secure that fourth. So, I'm kernel boosting that Cyrmax research because if he somehow counters my mass carrier bill with void rays, etc., I, I need something to rely on. At this point in the game, I made a huge mistake. I lose two carriers right there. That also counts the interceptors as being lost, too. So, carrier has, like, what, eight interceptors, eight times 25 plus 350 minerals and 250 gas. So, two carriers lost there. But I don't mind, we're on even footing on the supply. And I kind of forgot I had carriers over here. My army was kind of split up and uh, I really wanted to engage those corruptors because they only had 0-1 while my army had 0-3 and I was just like, I can rape this army really easily. I don't even think if he had a pure counter like spore crawlers like a 20 spore crawlers all these corruptors 3-3 three, three with some hydralis then maybe maybe he might be able to take out that army just depending on how well i'm microing it and i moved this carrier back over here because i saw his corruptors just flying around the map and i didn't want to get that carrier intercepted so i take out this expo and that expo you kind of didn't see in the replay and i'm too lazy to go back I'm trying to catch his corruptors off guard, hoping he's not paying attention, and yeah, he sent a bunch of banelings there to my zealots. Not very effective since I already kind of have 3,000 resources. And uh, at this point, while I'm attacking, it's good that I'm focusing on the micro right now, but while I'm attacking, I should really secure a fifth because I'm starting to run out of minerals at this point. And uh, I don't know, I'm just doing pretty well at this part. The Zerg player should have spent a lot of his resources investing into spore crawlers he should have just secured an area on the map like somewhere around here this is going to protect his third and his natural as well and it could possibly protect this area as well if he had some spore crawlers in this area just at least 20 or 30 spending all those excess minerals over there while supporting it with corruptors and hydralis he could have had the hydralis focusing on the interceptors because hydralis practically one shot an interceptor it's like one or two shots and then the corruptors to focus fire on the carriers because this is kind of a weak composition I, i'm just guessing he didn't really know how to react and uh, yeah 
So we see him reacting by getting a bunch of investors. He does have quite a lot of resources. At the uh, Earlier in, in the game, we saw him have 6,000 resources and 4,000 gas, and we see him just dump a bunch of resources again. And he's kind of whittling this army away, and uh, he's doing an okay job at it. But if we look at the supply discrepancy, it's pretty drastic. And he's doing a not too shabby of a job taking out a couple more carriers keeps whittling down the army and he has these expos plus on top of that grabbing that expo and that expo he probably thought this was an all-in on my part and it kind of was because i was running out of resources but i didn't realize i was this way ahead in supply i didn't even know i was more than double so that really helped out having way more supply than him Plus having better upgrades than him because I think his corruptors were just at 1-2. Something like that. And yeah, we can just see by the units lost how behind he is. And if we just look at the APM, you don't really need much APM to do this build. It's like what? An average of 70 APM, 67 it's not really that much when professional players have 100 to 300 APM. So, I don't know. Zerg kind of has a hard time dealing with these kind of builds. Because even if he took out all the carriers and he had mass corruptors, I would have just counter it with mass stalkers. Because at this point, I was starting to work on my 1-1-1. For, for my ground army so that way I can transition to blink stalkers and Z law it's kind of have a drastic change in army composition but at this point I knew I already won I was just kind of toying with him at this point because he didn't really have that much he had a ton of minerals but he was just desperately trying to figure out ways to spend his money getting an evil chamber kind of randomly I guess to get some spore crawlers dropping down his spire and yeah at this point i'm just kind of trolling with him and i'm just grabbing more expos just making sure just in case if he somehow makes a comeback i have something to rely on just in case if i troll him a little too hard and because i'll admit it it's happened to me before i've had a someone make an amazing comeback and i was toying with him for like 30 minutes and then i realized oh crap what am i gonna do to deal with this mass 200 army he somehow took out my army due to his amazing micro. It's like, why didn't I just take him out and just win? So there I go, just sacrificing my phoenix. I put them on whole position just for funsies. I have my army just waiting here, waiting to take him out. And that's basically how the build works. And I just go in, I'm just like, I'm bored. I want to do something else. And I just go in. He tries to mind control the carriers as a last resort. He leaves the game. And I don't really mind. This was kind of a trolley build. So to recap, you want to go for that natural. You want to go for a forge, fast, expand, and you don't want to do anything high pressure. Just play defensively. I had quite a few cannons uh, to prevent the Zerg player from going any aggressive pressure early in the game if he decides to attack seven minutes in. I had a couple cans to ward him off. Plus on top of that, I was producing off of three Stargates off of two bases. At that point, once I grabbed my third, I added in an extra Stargate, got in another Cybernex core. And I was struggling to get my force so that way I could focus on continuing carrier production because I was okay on money the whole entire game. It, just the problem was I could never get enough gas because you have to get those upgrades as well. It's extremely essential to get that 3-3. And then if possible, a huge bonus would be getting that, uh, whatever it's called the shield upgrade because that's going to protect your buildings a lot more against those baneling attacks because he was harassing me quite a bit with banelings and zerglings etc it's gonna make your cannons that much more robust and your army that much better and stronger so anyways that's it uh, i hope you learned something and uh, yeah